We meet up here with uh, Kathy Krogan, has an 18 year old dog by the name of BJ, mixed breed uh, terrier. The case was referred to me through uh, Dr. Wong over at Southeast Veterinary Neurology Center. I appreciated once again the opportunity and the referral for me to take on this case. Basically what we have here is we have a decrepitous or older pet, arthritic, obviously we, we know he has some issues, uh, you know, getting around the house. Uh, the owner, uh, Kathy, feels as though she did everything she could do as far as pharmaceuticals. I uh, really doesn't want to put uh, BJ under anesthesia for any odd reason. Uh, so this will be a great case to take on for the simple fact that it's going to display or show some of the different cases Doggy B can be used for. In this case, uh, Kathy feels as though the pharmaceuticals can only bring it to a certain degree. She wants to try something with different and alternative measures, which would be, in this case, dog therapy or massage therapy for her dogs. She understands the benefits of massage therapy uh, for the sole reason that herself is being treated with massage therapy for her ailments, so she understands the benefits of it. And now, to be able to implement those same things that are being used in her case, we will go ahead and implement them to uh, BJ. When meeting BJ, we can see that he looks ectoxic and down. Of course, at the age of 18, which pet wouldn't feel a little achy? Lucky for BJ and Kathy, this is not an impasse. Dog P can help. Let him do it on his own though. And then see what he what he's at. Just get him to this position, have him feel relaxed here. You know, just touch him. Soft as that is. Just so he's comfortable. Then, little by little. I'm not going to be hurting too much. Nah. <laughs> little by little, you just slowly. Still, while touching him up there. Yeah. And then, obviously, once you get him in this position, just hold him here and then just pet him like this. It's almost like you're moving the shoulder and over at the neck at the same time and just relax it. Give him a couple passes just to let him settle. Now he goes on side. Yeah, now he's completely on, on that okay. side. So as we're doing that, we let him get over to that side. Yeah. And then once obviously I, I have him in this position here and I feel that he's relaxed because you'll be able to feel it. You know, you won't see any muscle twitching. It's just nice. That's when I'll start to just position the, and the arms and the legs just in a, like in a whole entire laying down position. Obviously I don't want one arm over here, one over here. Just try to keep them all symmetrical. Yeah. And then uh, I'll start to do the same thing. For the arm, just this is what they normally call palpation. You just palpate it through. Uh, one of the main thing for this is just obviously, obviously for the animal to to be calm. You know, it does have a calming effect. But also, what I'm doing as I'm palpating, I'm trying to feel for any which I won't recommend you do this, obviously. But uh, I'm not gonna know. The only thing I the only why I do it this way is that as I'm actually going through the muscle fibers, I'm trying to see if I feel any lumps or bumps, what they mm -hmm. call them muscular adhesions, mm -hmm. and those things tend to, to develop when muscles are you know overworked or injured. They'll develop clumps of muscle tissue, right. which will which is like a muscle soreness, and that won't uh, allow the animal to properly you know strengthen or stretch out those muscles. But for you, obviously, you know just. This is enough, uh, like a moderate pressure, just lightly. While always maintaining my hand over the shoulder. Okay. But lightly. Yeah. 
Trying to down the limbs. Yeah. I always like to think that I'm just combing down the hair. Right. <laughs> and sometimes you'll see, like, I'll try not to stay too much on one mus muscle in particular. I'll, I'll go to the back just to give him an overall sense of work. Here, you want to sit here? Yeah. Once again, these are the normal movements they'll do if they're running. And we gotta remember that even if you're moving the shoulder, you gotta remember to move the elbow and the arm because a lot of these muscles have like accessory mus muscles or movements yeah. that when one muscle moves, it'll trigger another muscle to extend. So you just have to, for a moment there, just pretend you're the dog and think of how they will move their legs. Yeah. And obviously if you observe a dog running, you see that when they extend their shoulder, their arm also extends and then comes back and retracts. So if you had that vision in your head there, you'd be able to, you know, do these passive range of motions for you. Bring it these legs are too short. Yeah, once you relax, you'd be able to manipulate him in any way. But if you try to do this when he wasn't and when we first attempted, no way. No way. You need to be totally relaxed. This one is this is usually the listening for sit to stand. This is the, normally the movement that he'll do when you try to sit and then he'll try to stand. This is the position. This is more of the, the walking. Oh sorry Randy. <laughs> I did it to him. <laughs> <laughs> My model. You see he's not relaxed, that's why he, he felt that. That's like going around. Yeah, like if you, yeah, yeah, like if they're walking. This is the normal movement. And if he's one of these tree-oriented pets that are, you know, motivated by treats, even better to get him to go from point A to point B on his own. We can clearly see the Bee Gees having trouble ambulating around the house, especially over that step. Upon observing BJ here, we can clearly see that he's still a little to eight taxic, but he is still able to keep his balance as he makes his turn. Good boy, B. 
I know that he's pretty relaxed, which you know he is. That's still. Yeah, just ex extend the leg out like this. Yeah. And just you know, out here, you don't have to do the full full extension. This is good enough for him right here. And just what I always do is I put my palm right behind the elbow. If you got control of the elbow, the forearm will automatically extend. So. I'll just go just like this, just wave it back and forth, just a little bit. This is enough for me. You don't need the neat thing about Dogapi is not only are the animals benefiting from the service, but the owners as well. I try to teach the clients on there about the simple techniques that they can utilize at home, thus creating a bigger bond between pet and family member. It's at 12 o'clock, and I'm like, well, okay, I can't give it to you. Right, so then we'll just be back and forth. Yeah, back and forth. I am about 10 times you know that's good enough and then on my last stroke I would try to see how much I can get him to extend this is the part that gets tricky because uh, embedded in the muscle fibers are what they call these muscle spindle cells anyways long story short if you stretch a muscle too quick what happens is that automatically the reflex it puts it back to normal so that you just have to just up to here if you see he's giving you any discomfort, back out just a little bit forward, don't go back that way. But I can kind of feel that he'll let me stretch it out, but I don't want to, I don't want to stretch him too much. Right, little by little. Yeah. Yeah, we have, if we would have tried to do this the first session, oh. no. he would have been like, what? <laughs> What's going on here? This one here, you just go up this way and then back down. You know, the adduction, okay. adduction, just right. up and down like that. And you don't have to go all the way up, just like this, back down. If you start to see that he starts to give you any discomfort, just go even up to here. Be fine. Just keep it. Yeah. Put it lower and lower. Yeah. Those are normally do about 10 times just to get it worked up. Now he's doing more. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, of course all the muscle fibers are all loosened. Mm -hmm. He's relaxed. Obviously, he's not showing any uh, tension or discomfort, which will allow for a more effective stroke or, or stretch. That's why it's always important to, you know, to warm up the muscles. Even with him running or walking the way he did and us massaging him at first, yeah. that's enough uh, to, to warm up the muscles to allow for an effective stretch. So. Well, I've been trying to do the one where it's like he's running yeah. versus the back. Yeah, this one. Yeah. But I have to have time to, to get him relaxed. That's yeah, that's, that's the most important. I, I would at least dedicate at least five to like six minutes of like just holding him in that position once you right. got him relaxed. And then you can start with the stretch. Then we switch him to the other side. Yes, right? Yeah, but first I'll, I'll... That's what they do to me. Yeah, I'll do the feet. You know, I'll make him use his, his feet here like that. Yeah, oh, right. And then I'll do the front as well, and then I'll go back to the neck, and then I'll flip him. And then I'll show you how to... Because that's always the hard part, to transition and get him back to that other that's side. That's what, what my massage therapist says. Transition. Yeah. <laughs> And it makes me lie like that. Yeah. And then the other side. Yeah. yeah. And then the back. And as far as, uh, for the spine or the back, mm -hmm. just go like this and oh. just softly. Yeah. Because remember, that always scares me. Yeah, because remember that there's actually three pointy spots that come out of the spine. It's the top processes and the two side ones. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put too much pressure on that. So just a light, like an L, right over there. 
maybe like three or four passes going down the spine should be good. No, LeBron, he wanted to start all over again in Cleveland and bring all the guys into the East. LeBron said the guys bring over, and they brought in Jordan Poole, Kevin Then sometime now today I came home for lunch and he was like, <laughs> but I picked him up and took him out and he was doing his stuff outside. Thankfully, I was afraid I was going to come home tonight and see. Yeah. <laughs> and as far as the feet, just spread the toes, you know, pressing up like this and squeezing them like that. And spread them up. I can only do one at a time. And squeeze the pad. Yeah, squeeze the pad. Like, make him push. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. Yeah, make him push. I like that concept. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> it's it's still like a passive technique for him, mm -hmm. for for us rather. But he's still the one making the movement. So. Yeah. Uh, flip. Mm. Notice how calm and relaxed BJ is, almost as if he's in a trance or asleep. So when you flip them, remember always remain in the contact with them. I, I put them back in our starting position that we had. Mm -hmm. this out, turn them around. Okay. I'll do the same thing. You know, let him be okay here. And just turn go to the other turn. side. Always be careful with his back legs too. You want to get them under him. That way when you flip them, you don't got one leg here and you're trying to flip them. And pull like this, and just little by little. You know, if he stays in an awkward position like this for a few seconds, that's fine because as we're palpating through, mm -hmm. palpating him this way here, we're gonna be slowly pushing him to get to laying down. So while he's there, you know, obviously keeping my hand firm right here. I'll just pet him like this, but at the same time when I'm petting him, I'm actually turning him little by little. Ah. <laughs> and what helps too is that if a leg is trapped under him, if you just move that leg, usually the body will fall. Where, where is your leg at? Yeah, you see? Yes. And if for some reason, if you're off of the mat or wherever you're at, just push it a little bit. There he is. Oh. And then once again, just how many set of muscles are there in the dog's ear? A, 6, B, 32, C, 30, or D, 56? C, 30 is the correct answer. A dog has a set of 30 muscles in their ear. A human has six and a cat has 32. Everything's usually slow movement. You don't want to oh, yes, move right. too quick. And once again, we begin with the palpating. Through all the limbs, just so you can become aware of. Yeah, I can do it to my model, I forgot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, technically, he's getting, he's getting a massage too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then every now and then just, you know, pet him on the head. And do the ears. And do the ears. Right. He like, I know he likes yeah. the ears. And you can do both while you're doing that, you know, palpating. Mm -hmm. Always having the movement going on. Okay, this time start with the neck. Kind of start from the neck, go down, back up, and then go down.
by enticing BJ with the treats, we were able to get him to do exactly what we wanted him to do. Is to try to use his own muscles and his own strength to try to get around the house. And since he loves his treats, this is a win-win situation for both of us. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now I bet if I put a mat there, I bet he'll come then. Come on. Now this Come is on. the neat thing about this. It's Notice safe. how when there Come isn't on. a mat on the floor, how BJ Come was on. reluctant to move. The second that I was able to place the mat, Come Notice on. how he moved. There you go. You're almost there. Come on. Good boy. This is a prime example of what it really takes for an animal to feel confident in their abilities to move around the house. If an animal is scared or frightened or knows that he can't do it, they won't do it. But the second he knows that there's something that he can do, he'll do it. See, if you can get them comfortable on this tile here, if you can get them to be comfortable, you know, standing or walking on this tile here, you do good. Good boy. Yeah. No, it's because I don't have a treat. Come on. Look, treat. Cool. Just in the third session here, we can see that BJ is starting to ambulate around the house, especially over the tile, a little more effective. He could even get up that step. He looks good though. Look at that. Speak up there. BJ is doing really well. Uh, Kathy is very astonished by the results that we're starting to get with the uh, canine massage therapy and uh, dog appeal for BJ. Um, he steadily continues to improve. Uh, he's going now being able to walk on the tile, whereas first he was having an issue with that, obviously maneuvering throughout the house. So uh, little by little we're starting to see that he is recovering his footing. He is starting to be more aware of his uh, feet placement. Who said a good massage wouldn't put you to sleep? Look how relaxed BJ is. Today will be BJ's fifth session. We're going to start to incorporate some of the uh, outside environment uh, to our benefits, meaning that uh, 
we know that he has some issues maneuvering throughout the tile which he is getting better at it at it uh, I want to try to start to use um, some of the gravel or the sidewalk that she has outside so that he'd be able to have a better track course with better traction comes better feet placement and uh, better proprioception or placement awareness on behalf of BJ so uh, let's see what we could uh, do here today <laughs> Come on, you can do it, come on, come on, nice, good boy. for the uh, seventh and final session with uh, BJ it's been an interesting recovery for him uh, I mean another true testament to the benefits of uh, massage therapy and dogopy the impact that it's starting to have a lot with these arthritic pets and um, it was a great case to take on uh, you know like I said uh, the benefits are there uh, we were able to uh, help BJ maneuver or ambulate throughout the house uh, that was a major plus for, uh, for uh, Kathy we knew that was uh, one of the main issues that he seemed to be having around the house. So, uh, once again, I uh, appreciate the uh, referral from Dr. Wong over at the uh, Southeast Veterinary Neurology Center. I appreciate it and uh, I look forward to um, embarking on more of these cases. And the neat thing about uh, BJ's case is that obviously we knew he was arthritic and uh, we knew it was going to be, you know, it's going to be a long recovery for him. That's one of the main things that stressed out to Kathy is that uh, I was able to kind of like teach her in a sense of how she's going to take over when these sessions are done. I can't be there every day for BJ, so I was at least able to also educate Kathy into how she's going to go ahead and uh, start to do some of these sessions on her home with BJ. So uh, that's another interesting thing about the dynamics of uh, Dogopy is that I can be there also to educate the clients on the uh, proper techniques to use uh, so then, of course, they can go ahead and uh, transition into them, providing the care for them at their own house. Good oh boy. Come on. Come on, BJ. 
Ranger. Good boy. Come on. Hi, my name is Kathy, and my dog BJ is 18 years old, and he was having trouble walking. So I took him to his vet, Dr. Marmish, and they referred me to Dr. Wong at Southeast Veterinary Neurology Center. So I took BJ there, and he went through a number of tests. And Dr. Wong referred me to Alex of Dogapy for uh, massage therapy. And being a recipient of massage therapy myself, I was very excited to have BJ try it out because I knew that it had worked a lot on me. So when we got home that night, I went online and looked up Dogapy just to see what it was all about. And I was happy to see all the good things that were going on. There were case studies of different dogs and problems they had had and how they recuperated and I was very happy to see that. As the sessions went on, BJ was getting better and better. He was le learning, relearning things he had stopped doing for a while. Like turning around. I didn't even realize that he wasn't turning around. Alex brought my attention to that. He wasn't sitting down normally and he was relearning it. So over the sessions he did get back to walking became more enthusiastic because he was laying down a lot and that really made a difference for BJ. I would recommend Dogapy and Alex to anyone who needs help with their pets. Behavioral issues, issues like BJ had, age and mobility, and probably he can work with cats too.